that are happening to people, millions and millions of people. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to tell them I'm with them. And also I'd like to say that I'm very grateful for this community and for all of my friends and family. My name is John, and uh, I have a joy that the, uh, and also a concern that the uh, the Interfaith Council on Climate Change is having a wonderful set of meetings all this week, and the Unitarians are to present on uh, Thursday at the U United Church. They've given us space to do that, so I have some schedules for the rest of the uh, the week. Uh, today is World Religions Week at the uh, what is known as the was known as the Robin Gun Club. Uh, the Baha'is are doing that, and uh, Michael is going to give a little uh, talk about Unitarianism. So we're invited to do that there. So a little bit helps, and we might defeat this climate attitude. I have schedules here if you can pick one up. I'm Allie, and um, every time someone comes up and says, what is your status? Have you gotten any word yet? And we finally have word. We, ha we are here for another two years. <laughs> so we're, we are now legal aliens instead of illegal aliens. <laughs> so that just happened this week. Only took oh. four months instead of six. Maybe we should all just have two years so we could behave ourselves every two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Karen, and I'd like to light a candle for Michael Pratt and how grateful I am that he is here speaking. Welcome, Michael. We're happy to have you here. I'm Katharina. I have a bit of a concern about my tenant moving out and me trying to find a new one or turning it into bed and breakfast. I need help to make decisions and calm down. <laughs> I'll just like one. Welcome, Peter. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> and one for all the unspoken joys and concerns that remain in our hearts. Michael? Yes. Sure. I would like to light a candle. I've been. I'm Marcia. And I've spent the last week running around Nelson and other places to get donations for the Malican Hole Community Center and the Rural Alternatives Society for the Locavore Feast, for the silent auction. And I just want to light a candle in thanks for all the wonderful people who have donated wonderful items so generously and made that not a horrible task. And sometimes it can be when you're out asking, asking. People are giving, and I thank them for that. Thanks, Marcia. Next on the program is uh, a poem. And last year, I, or last year, last week, I uh, introduced a poem from Mary Oliver. She's an American poet, quite well known uh, at Summer Day. And today I have her again in her own voice, which is kind of neat because when you have the poet reading their own poetry, you get how it was meant to be said. And somehow I just, you can hear it, hear what she means in, it, in the poem and how she speaks. Uh, so I love technology that we can have her here speaking that. And 
the, the poem is called Wild Geese. It's only about a minute, and I will play it, and then we'll have silent time together for a few minutes, and then I'll play it again so you can hear it again. Uh, yeah. So we'll get comfortable for quiet meditation and listen. <laughs> You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce our speaker today. Michael, do uh, you like that? Yes, we would. Everybody, a little lesson on the microphone. Holding it like this doesn't work. Holding it like this works. Thanks, Parsha. Yeah. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Michael Pratt. Michael uh, is a longtime Unitarian and a member of our congregation for many years. 
uh, or this group that's becoming a Unitarian congregation and been through the transition and, and has been a board member and uh, has a background as a scientist and uh, really a community-spirited, uh, service-centered person who we're really happy to have in our group. And today he's going to uh, introduce a topic uh, about God and, and the conversations that are happening uh, in books and, and about what God is and how that works. And it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Michael and say welcome. Thank you, Michael. And you want to use that for that either way. You can use that clip on. I can put this on first because you don't have to hold this. Oh, this handout so that people can have something to take away afterwards. Because <laughs> if you're anything like me, I tend to forget about the, about the good stuff I heard. So I need to have something to remind me of it. Anyway, so <clears throat> the first uh, subject is can we le learn to believe in God? And uh, this is a uh, difficult question and do we have to answer it? I don't know. It's not working. It's so, not working very well. Okay. I'll just get it closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same situation. tricky subject, especially for Unitarians, but um, somehow it's, it's like connecting to a, a higher source that enriches your life and our lives. And uh, so it, if you don't believe in it, then that's okay, but somehow believing in God ensures an eternity of happiness. So. That's something to be attracted to. And uh, there's no God and you believe in him. The downside is relatively minimal, minimal. Even the chance is tiny, believing in the right bet. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, as Unitarians, we don't have to believe in anything we don't want to. But uh, there are definitely advantages to plugging into a higher power, because the higher power's energy and spirit reciprocates and makes our lives more special. And um, a major pro problem with to believing in God is that the mainline churches ask us to accept creeds that are contradictory to our current scientific knowledge. And when you think about it, you're asked to believe that uh, Jesus is the Son of God and God's up in the sky somewhere and that's all doesn't compute anymore. <laughs> so uh, we have to find a way as Unitarians to what's really true. And uh, we can refer to the Bible, but that's uh, a little bit out of date. and. Um, but the, once again, the, the mainline churches expect us to say that we believe in God the Father and Jesus Christ, his only son, and funny stuff like that, which doesn't really compute. But um, back of all that, there is some reality. Um, we can take these beliefs in a kind of... A, with a pinch of salt, but nevertheless, 
realizing there's a lot of truth to them in a, in a deeper way. And even if you don't uh, like to say the required uh, beliefs, the creeds that don't compute anymore, we as Unitarians can interpret the creeds in a way that makes sense to us and uh, spiritually like do we believe that uh, God's your father? Well, that, that's okay. Not literally, but certainly God's energy coming into us is, is a very significant uh, thing to strive for. And uh, so the, the Christian Bible was written before the scientific method method was developed, so we're required to believe that Jesus was the Son of God and the Virgin Mary. And uh, that doesn't quite fit in with our modern scientific knowledge. So it's really uh, counterproductive to have people say they believe that when it doesn't make sense to us scientifically. And there's lots of examples of that in the Bible because it was written in pre-scientific times. But, you know, the uh, people who wrote it didn't know any different, and they were just accepting what uh, they were taught and were faithful. And we can be faithful, too, into what we believe. Now, of course, as Unitarians, we don't all, all believe the same thing. Some might believe that uh, God is... Uh, an old man up in the sky, but most of us, I think, probably have gotten beyond that and realized that God is everywhere and is more of a kind of a invisible but very significant force that if we plug into, it reciprocates and gives us <laughs> spiritual strength. And... Uh, Right now, our society is going through a kind of a, a metamorphosis, and it, uh, it's interesting to see how Deepak Chopra has written this book in support of God in a rather old-fashioned way, in which God is in heaven and not quite quite as old-fashioned as the Old Testament, but um, still not quite acceptable to our modern view of things. So, on the other hand, the we have... The Future of God. Future of God. Oh, I was just wondering what the name of the book was. I couldn't oh, The Future of God by Deepak Chopra. Huh? <coughs> and uh, that's what I call my presentation today, but I don't have to take that too seriously. <laughs> um, and Richard Dawkins is the head of the chemistry department at what university was it? So anyway, he has written this book called The God Delusion, where he totally disbelieves in the old-fashioned God. So we have this kind of ding-dong battle going on in our society today between old-fashioned way of thinking about God and perhaps a more modern attitude a more unitarian attitude, perhaps, of, of the nature of God and how he's part of the, the scenery, um, the spiritual scenery, and uh, how we can try to relate to God as we see him or her and uh, come up with our own interpretations. As Unitarians, we were encouraged to do that. And, uh, <coughs> And I think that's uh, a, good, a good thing to do. Not being told you have to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. <coughs> God's up there in the sky somewhere. It doesn't compute anymore. And it's kind of schizophrenic to ask people to believe something that doesn't compute anymore. I don't think we should have to do that at all. And all the same, when I go to the Anglican Church, what I do once in a while, we have to say these things, that, but I realize that actually they're 
are metaphorical truths, and uh, we don't have to believe them literally. So that's one way of getting around the uh, thing of saying stuff that we don't quite believe in. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that's okay, God. <laughs> so, yeah, part of the trouble is that the Christian Bible was written before the scientific method was developed. And, you know, we were, so we are still required to believe that Jesus was the Son of God and the Virgin Mary, and God is an old man up in the sky, etc. Which, uh, as Unitarians, we don't have to believe that because it doesn't compute anymore. And it's a pity that the mainline churches keep, keep on saying that in their creeds when it doesn't really fit in with the, our current knowledge. It just doesn't fit in at all. So, I don't know. It seems like um, there should be some give and take here where mainline churches admit their creeds are a little outdated and could try and bring them up to date a bit more so people don't have to have a, a kind of a split personality between what they know is true scientifically and what they have to repeat in church spiritually. And as Unitarians, we, we don't have that problem, but um, we have to sympathize with our brothers and sisters who have to say that creed every Sunday. And currently, this is schism between the people who believe in God and the people who don't. And uh, that's another kind of barrier to overcome. And Deepak Chopra has written his whole book where he supports the belief in God, but doesn't really get into the scientific side of things. Uh, but um, he, he takes this kind of a spiritual approach, but not a scientific approach. And then Richard Dawkins takes the scientific approach, which dismisses all the uh, beliefs in God as being up in heaven, but also he don't exactly support God being everywhere. And uh, so as Unitarians, we have to sort through this and come up with what we believe. And uh, it seems like um, somewhere in between there's the truth. But um, the mainline churches keep on believing in this pre-scientific creed or creeds, which doesn't make sense. It, it's just ridiculous to believe two different realities. And as Unitarians, we, we're getting it all together. We don't believe two different things. We join our beliefs together so that they make sense in a Unitarian sort of way. Yeah, Unitarians. <laughs> <clears throat> so are you saying that the Unitarians are more of a middle way or it's an answer to, to join these kind of belief systems or like someone that's more on, a, on a, a spectrum, more scientific or more, um, more mainstream belief systems? Well, that gives me all kinds of possibilities to answer that. <laughs> but obviously, um, as, as a scientist, I, I just can't be so schizophrenic as to go and say one thing at the church, and, and in my heart, I, I know what's really true. And uh, it's just really a pity that the mainline churches keep on rejecting the scientific knowledge and make people say these non-computing uh, creeds and 
we can just let them go on with that. I mean, it may work for them in a sort of split mind way. But uh, we are here because we, 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 want, we want it to be all one truth. And that's a meaning of Unitarianism. So welcome to the club. Marcia. Uh, um, <clears throat> as you were talking, I, <clears throat> I picked up our, our little uh, pamphlet. And, and the, the tradition talks about uh, Unitarians believe each person is free to search for his or her own personal truth on issues such as existence, nature, the meaning of life, deities, creation, and afterlife. And, and then it has the things we do believe in, in terms of the principles, the worth and dignity of every person, um, the right of conscience, um, the goal of world co community of peace. <coughs> I mean, there are things that, that we, we as Unitarians all share. Um, and in terms of whether or not there's a deity somewhere, that's responsible for all of that um, is a question left to each individual in their heart. Uh, <laughs> um, and you know, some some believe that nature is is the grounding for all of it. Others have other um, flightier thoughts. <laughs> but that's it's what he's talking about. that's what you're talking about. Yes, that's yes. right. That's we right. Some reinforcement there. Yeah, Snow exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's right here in, in our in our little thing. All right. And I thank I'm you. I'm glad we're on the track. Do you want to have a discussion now? Um, <laughs> what, do you want to have a discussion now? Yeah. I don't sure. Know. Someone else. Um, pass the mic. My name is Drew. Um, a couple of pass anecdotes. Mic. Pass me the mic. No, it's okay. I can speak loud. No, no, the mic. Oh, yeah, the mic. Talking oh, my stick. God. <laughs> All right, thanks. Talking stick. Uh, my name's Drew. Thanks for having me. Uh, Pick it up towards your mouth. Little anecdotes <laughs> came to mind here, uh, just as you were speaking. Um, I'd like to say I made up these anecdotes, but obviously I can't take the credit. The first credit, uh, first anecdote I had was um, based on your scientific method, and the first line of your conversation was about hedging your bets uh, for or against the existence of God. And I was thinking about how about a century ago, Schrodinger gave us his uncertainty principle. And with faith, I can tell you that that cat is dead. Hmm. Because it was 100 years ago. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> and the, the, other, the other anecdote that comes to mind is... Um, if someone were to give you a suitcase with a million dollars in it, and you see that money, would you have any faith that you would be a millionaire? I can say something to about my, my, my reason why I came to the um, Unitarian. Well, so years and years ago, I used to always go to church, always searching, always looking for something. <clears throat> One day I went up to the pastor and I said, what really is God? And he said, oh, you have to believe and you have to pray and you have to come to church. And I thought, what kind of, yeah, I don't want to say it, what <laughs> stupid thing is that, to say something like that for a pastor. And uh, ever since I've never gone to church anymore and that's what brought me here because we are more open for that question. We are more open to search and like what you're talking about. Wouldn't be talked about in church. No. I'll just put my two cents in. <laughs> I kind of, um, I wouldn't agree with you, Michael, that Unitarians, yes, we agree on some things together but certainly not on faith, on what we believe. I think we believe that everyone's entitled to their belief, as Marcia said, and it's a conversation that happens at Unitarian congregations and meetings where within a congregation you have people who are Christian or Buddhist or Earth-centered or believe in something from outer space or shapes or anything else in between. 
And I think what Unitarians are is accepting. And we're, we're an example of a meeting of all those ideas coming together and being able to share and hear from each other and learn from each other. That's what, to me, Unitarianism is, and that's what makes it unique. We're not exclusive. And so I think it's also really important to not minimize someone who believes in a virgin birth, no matter what the science does, because I could have someone speak about, you're going to believe something you see in a microscope over what you feel in your heart. I mean, it's just an argument that there's no win. I think what's more important is that we can share these ideas in a respectful way. And I think it's important to respect people, even if they have different beliefs. Um, so I read every book that Deepak ever wrote, except for that one. So I'm interested in that, but um, because I've been reading him for 25 years, I've watched this interesting evolution that he's having. And, you know, he started out as, you know, a man who grew up in a spiritual, very deeply spiritual life with his family, but he became a doctor and a scientist. And his, the interesting thing about overall, about what he decided he wanted to do in the world was to help bring all um, religions together to understand the common points, the common the commonality, and what what brings about um, connection, connectivity between all things, between people, between people in nature, and the fact that he saw everything as being connected. So he began to write these different books from different, in little different ways, to try and reach different people, so that they could all somehow be more tolerant and understanding that there is a common ground that everyone seems to be speaking. And so he's written different books that sort of targeted people who might be very sort of um, Jesus and God and other people who are from <coughs> Eastern religions and other people who really just feel the pulse of spirit in everything. And so each book has a little different flavor of him trying to bring that together. So I'm curious what this one is and why it felt so traditional, like why it felt like that to you when you read it. And so anyways, that was just a, a thought. And is your name? Pardon me? Your name? Mona. Yeah. Anyways, anyone else? Uh, I'm Peter. I think I'm having too many thoughts, so I'll just, just try and go with it. But my first thought was, I don't think being scientific excludes believing in God. And I think even Einstein pointed out, actually, the more he found out, the more mystery there is. And, um, and I, I've recently, well, I think the mistake that the quote big churches make is a mistake, a metaphor for fact. When these are all great stories that are supposed to have a you know a, a mythological function in our lives, not necessarily a literal functions, and I think Unitarians are open to that certainly. And um, I also I've been listening to Robert Moore, who's a union analyst and involved in the men's movement a lot, and also Joseph Campbell. And what what anyway what Robert Moore was pointing out is like faith can be a very powerful thing for people, and actually not having any faith at all. Uh, and being depressed is not really helpful towards moving life forward. So I try to, if it's working for somebody, it's sort of hard for me to tell them that they should believe something else, I guess. I don't know, in, a, in kind of a compassionate way. Um, and, but that's, that said, I mean, I just find, I, I just find that coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. That's, I always like that one. And, I, and that's what makes me sort of suspend my belief or believe in some way in spirit, anyway. Thank you. I'm Dale. When I first came to discover the Unitarian Church of Vancouver, what really grasped me there, listening to Reverend, Reverend Philip Hewitt, um, he said, he, he gave the message that God is really ineffable and it's okay to not 
know what God is. It can be anything for anyone. But ineffable is the really beautiful word. You can't really define or you can't really know what it is. But you can have comfort in the spirit or the something. And that really makes sense to me. It's 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 logic, but it's science and it's and it's faith. Well, that just reminds me of uh, the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. If you can define it, and that's not it. So that that kind of ineffable, you know, something, you know. But if you if you've experienced um, the mystery, and but you don't necessarily have to name it. You can't. I don't mind the name if somebody wants to name it. Um, I believe uh, that God. She doesn't mind. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just think that, um, y you know, it's, it's, so, it's so expansive and it's everything. It's everything that is. There, putting putting uh, divinity in a box doesn't work for me, but it might work for someone else, you know. So... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, thoughts? I agree very much with what you said, Lars, that uh, it's up to everybody else, whatever makes you happy. And, and uh, if whatever you want to believe and, and it fits and it suits you and it's good, then that's good. That's why I was so upset when this church pastor said, he put me sort of in a spot, and he said, you have to believe this. And uh, no, we have the choice to believe what we need to believe, sort of thing, right? All right, thanks. Any closing words, Michael? Okay, well, thank you, everybody, for your input. That's just great. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, in the meantime, we can experience God directly as waves of love shining in our mind's eyes. So I leave that thought with you, and thank you, everybody, for your contributions. Thanks, Michael. Certainly an interesting question. It made me wonder, what if we said who believed in God? Who would put up their hand or who would say yes? You know, or say, I'm not sure. You know, and I mean, that's what Unitarian and being in the community is about. I mean, there's lots of places to go here where people can share, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to, to do that, where people can share, do a testimonial about what you learned as a kid and uh, how that's evolved. And we can see how that's common. We're sending around the basket for donations to help with keep the lights on and pay for our equipment and our musical uh, accompaniment and those sort of things. Please be generous. I'm also going to pass around divinity in a box. <laughs> kind of. Of course, in Miracles cards. We haven't done this in a while. So pick one card and, pa and read it to yourself and pass it along and we'll have an opportunity to read your own card and we'll just let, let Spirit help you pick that card and, and maybe we'll, when, once you do read it, maybe you can, if it's, a light goes off about why you might have picked that card or what it's saying to you or a question you have, you might be able to make a comment. We might we have a few minutes for that. And the cards are from something called The Course in Miracles. Uh, and it's a, a, another spiritual path of... Uh, thanks, Peter. Karen wants two. No, she has more. She's choosing one. She's choosing one. Okay, why don't, why don't we get started, Anne? Yeah, pass that up here. Okay, mine says, the only aspect of time that is eternal is now. Um, yes, you learn 
from that, oh, you learn from that uh, having rest. Let me read this again. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> you learn that, ha that first having rest, have it. I get it. You. <laughs> you learn first that having rests on giving and not on getting. And we all know that. <laughs> all right. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. It takes great learnings to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. And this is great because it has to do with a lot with Pratt's talk. You can turn the mic up this way so you, we can hear you better. We didn't hear you quite as well as we could. You want to say that again, dear? I didn't hear yeah. yeah. Why don't you read it again with the mic up? Up higher like yeah. this. In order to hear. Yeah. To hear. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good job. It takes great learnings to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. Amen. Yeah. So and so, what that card's saying, you know, all events, all circumstances. So those ones that you say you wish you'd never had, those people you never would have liked to have met, or things that didn't turn out the way you could, you wanted them to, they're helpful too. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever wasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what you acknowledge in your brother, you are acknowledging in yourself, and what you share, you strengthen. And I get the. Um, the gender issue around the Course in Miracles. Um, but I love this because I, I uh, had a lovely experience with my brother, my physical brother, uh, my blood brother, uh, which was very much about acknowledging in each other and sharing in each other. So, yeah. love that. We need, just need to work on some gender neutral language. Yeah. And feel free to do that if you, you want, want to adjust that thing. as you're reading. I like, so. yeah. I like sometimes doing it in first person too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is no strain in doing God's will. As soon as you recognize that, it is also your own. <clears throat> Every loving thought is true. Everything else is an appeal for healing and health, regardless of the form it takes. So the same message is more <clears throat> If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. Can't say I get that one. God does not change his mind Oops. about nope. <laughs> God does not change his mind about you, for he is not uncertain of himself. When anything threatens your peace of mind, ask yourself. Has God changed his mind about you? <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't even read this yet, so I'm going to read it now. <laughs> um, when you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. As you see them, you will see yourself. As you treat them, you will treat yourself. As you think of them, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in them you will find yourself or lose yourself. Hmm. answers everything. The goal of the curriculum is to know thyself. There's nothing else to seek. So the box is coming around to put the cards back in. It is impossible to overestimate your brother's value. Your brother's value. Value. What you see reflects your thinking, and your thinking but reflects your choice of what you want to see. So what I would like to see is peace on earth. And I always thought that maybe it should begin with others. And I've come to realize that in reality it has to begin with me. Yeah. 
there be peace on earth, and let it begin with us. <laughs> It is only because you think that you can run some little part or deal with certain aspects of your life alone that the guidance of the Holy Spirit is limited. And I have to add to that, I don't call it that, but I relate to that, and my relation to that is when I discovered that I could use my consciousness to kind of tap in somehow. That's just language that we've heard, right? But, you know, it's the best language I can use. A while, some while ago, it doesn't happen very often where I'm focused enough, but then I realize it's there. It's like whatever it is, you know, it's there. And if you think I can take that and, and, and have it direct my, my life through my own doing. It's interesting. Here, here. Mm. It's awesome. We make good Quakers. You realize that <laughs> the spirit is moving this group right now in this circle. Thank yes. you all. My name is Rachel, and I love to be here when I can get here. And um, this little thing is about sacrifice, and it's very relevant to me right now as um, a, a, a granny and a great granny. And uh, we're we're right at the stage where we've got generations coming up who need us, and we're wondering how much we can share with with them without then you know sacrificing so much that we might even become a burden. And it's I think it's not an uncommon dilemma for people in their eighties to think, well, how can we be with our younger generations and our community without then knocking ourselves flat on the back and then becoming a burden. So it's this is very relevant for me. It's really walking me right in the eye here. And it's kind of it's kind of a, a verdy a wordy thing, but it says uh, who understands what giving means must laugh at the idea of sacrifice. Uh, you get that? Uh, you want me to take it one more time? Uh, it's, it's notion of that sacrifice in itself is a concept that really isn't, isn't a, a good concept. Let's just forget that one. The idea if I gave something, it would mean that I would have less. It's yeah, the sacrifice like sounds like you're, you're, you're going to kill something like a lamb. Like in the Old Testament, or be at loss, or Jesus, you like you know, giving his life, or us giving, I like, you know, giving. It, 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 that, that's an it's a it's an old fashioned notion. Let's let's forget that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And think about it another way. I'm gonna go home with that one. Oh Lord. Okay. Can you read it again? It read it once more. One more time. <laughs> okay. Get it. It's hitting a few people through the eyes. Is it okay? Who understands what giving means? If you understand what giving Those means. Those who understand what giving means mm -hmm. laugh at the idea of what sacrifice mm -hmm. says to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got it? Yes. <laughs> we got it. That's good. I, I tell people when I ask them for a gift or a donation to the silent auction that it gives them the opportunity to give which is, I think, what that's saying. The giving is an opportunity. For I see a own. very selfish act. <laughs> means a lot to a lot of people, doesn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine what it means to have no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but merely to be perfectly calm and quiet all the time? Anger cannot occur unless you believe that you have been attacked, that your attack is justified in return, and that you are in no way responsible for it. <laughs> I would okay. like to close with this. Hold on. Oh. You, you didn't have a card? No. Did you want to read something? I still have a card. Yeah, I just want to read something. I've got a punchline from my printout. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that you would. In the meantime, we can experience God directly as waves of love shining in our mind's eyes. 
I hope some of you can do that. It's kind of magical, and uh, um, it, it, it takes a little bit of effort, though. Anyway, thank you. I think I got the last card, which is kind of neat. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about today's service. You know, we we started and we sang Amazing Grace, uh, and the clergyman, Mr. Newton, who was a slave ship captain and then became a, a hymn writer. I mean, he was somehow got to being in the now and doing, being in service and doing what was good and right. And I think that's the call of that. And, you know, Mary Oliver in the poem talked about being in the family of things, you know, showing up, being here and taking care of each other. So my card fits along that line. It says, you are altogether irreplaceable in the mind of God. No one else can fill your part of it. And while you leave your part of it empty, your eternal place merely waits for your return. It's never too late to show up and follow that inner guidance to do what needs to be done. That's what I get from that. That card that she read, had, that was what my was saying, you know, without reading properly. <laughs> you have more when you give than when you get. You have more to give. You you get more when you give. Right. Yes, giving and receiving are one. They're the same. Right. You, you can't give and not be receiving something. And that goes with you know with your card when you talked about when you see someone and you think something about them, or say something to them, or treat them a particular way. That's not going there. That's staying with you, too. So you're kind. You get kind back. Um, I'm just going to close and, and, uh, and put out the candle. But know that the light's going to shine on all of us as we go about our week and hopefully see you next week. Did we have? Who do we have for next week? Lee Reed. Lee Reed is going to be here and talking about uh, maybe her seniors in, yeah. in the community and what that experience aging. is like aging, aging. and uh, yeah so and I'll be back next week as well and I hope all of you will be and so I'll just put up this candle and these ones as well and maybe we'll do a song why don't we stand and do one more little song what about this light, little light of mine that's great <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, thank you. Are there any other? Just, just a couple, I have a couple of announcements. Announcements, okay, great. And I will, I'll take them. Um, just these are sort of longer term things first uh, May 18th the Canadian Unitarian uh, uh, Council is having a conference in Hamilton it's a weekend long conference so representatives from all across Canada the what, 44 congregations 45 or something like that 5,000 Unitarian representatives from them will come together and actually it's where we're going to be voted in to be a, a Unitarian congregation, so I'm already booked with Air Miles, and it's off, off, uh, off high season, so if you're going to Ontario at some point, why not make it May 18th, we can <laughs> add that in. Also, April 7th in Vancouver, the Unitarian congregations, uh, Vancouver Unitarian uh, congregation is hosting a, a meeting, a one day of Unitarians in the metro Vancouver area, and we're invited to come and meet and talk about Unitarian type things. And so if that's Vancouver's on your list, then maybe April 7th you can make. The other is, John mentioned the uh, encountering climate justice. Part of being a Unitarian is, um, um, you know, joining with others to uh, do good around climate justice, social justice. So there's a program here 
different events, and today at Tupac at the Rotten Gun Club, but also Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. There's walks and talks and all kinds of good stuff. Have a look at that. Sorry, I just read the email before I came about that. Yeah. World religion. Yeah. Is World there different? Is there different? Have a sheet. Well, what I was going to say was it said 4 p.m. For today? At the Rod and Gun Club. No, it's 2. Oh, okay. where's the Rod and Message Club? Rod and Gun Club's at the Cottonwood Park, just across the, the bridge. The Mickey McEwen Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you've been to the Cottonwood yeah. Market, you go up to the falls, there's a little bridge that you can walk over the, walk over the creek, Cottonwood Creek. You've seen it. It's where people park out the back. It's behind the recycling center. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later for about it. And okay, and I think uh, in May there's going to be a local conference of Kamloops and uh, Kelowna Trail and us and uh, getting together as just as. Uh, Local unit. Uh, I think it's about the 21st. No, that's the weekend of the CUC. Yeah. And March. Oh, March. March, yeah. Okay, well, we'll, have to, we'll put that notice out. The other one is uh, the there's a, uh, a touring live theater uh, going to be at LDR on uh, February 22nd. And it's uh, got a native name I can't pronounce, but it's First Nations Reconciliation and a really interactive play. And it's only one time, one show, it's 15 bucks, and uh, you want a flyer on that and want to attend, it'd be great. Um, Any other? Hi, um, two things. One, uh, I sort of mentioned it with my candle, but next Saturday at 5.30 at the Valentin Hole Community Center, we are having our uh, annual, and sometimes semi-annual, but this year it's the annual Locavore Feast, um, which is the 100 Mile Potluck. And it's by donation and a generous potluck dish with as many local ingredients as possible, but we are not the food police. So please come, bring a generous potluck dish, and enjoy celebrating local food. And. Uh, and community. Um, and if you want to find out more about it, go to www.valakenhole.com. Or just come and talk to you. <laughs> Any, anyone else? Uh, on the third Tuesday, Morag is having her laughter yoga here at 7 o'clock. And the last one was, um, there were about 15 people. And it was a lot of fun. It was really great. And yeah, so join us if you can. All right, thanks, Anna. Thanks, Marie, for doing that. All right, well, thank you. Have a great day and the rest of the week. And enjoy the view. There's something happening every week. No.